Hey everyone and welcome back to our channel where we post daily videos on cutting edge technologies. In this video, we are going to be talking about an amazing pair programming tool called AI to SQL. It is a powerful and user friendly platform that enables users to generate SQL queries using natural language. It streamlines database management, query generation and data analysis, making it an invaluable tool for developers, data analysts and database administrators. AI to SQL helps you efficiently generate SQL code for different databases. And these databases are MySQL, PostgreSQL, Microsoft Excel, MongoDB, Oracle, MariaDB, and Snowflake. But in this video, we are going to be focusing on generating queries for MySQL database. Let's start the action. Firstly, you have to log in into the AI to SQL account in order to use this platform. Once you logged in, you will be having an interface that looks something like this. Here on the left side, you will have these options on the left navigation menu. And on the right side, by default, you will be on the workspace. So this is how the AI to SQL workspace looks like. It has a text box in which you can write your prompts. Then you have the option to select the database, the tables, and then generate the response for the query. So in order to generate SQL queries, you need to have a database schema or the tables on which the queries will be created. So in order to do that, you have to click on your tables. And right now you can see that there is no table inside it. So I'm going to click on add your tables to add table into this platform so that the SQL queries can be generated upon these tables. So you have different options. Either you can manually add the table. You have the option to import the database schema via the CSV, import the DDL script, data connector, the upload the ER diagram. In this video, I'm going to go with importing the database schema via the CSV. So once you click on it, here you have to provide the database schema of your database. And in order to generate it, you have to go to your database management system. In this video, I'm going to be using the MySQL Workbench. And this is my database called Pet Data. It has the following four tables, Owners, Pets, Procedures Details, and Procedures History. I'm going to go ahead and type this command that says select table schema as schema, table name as table, column name as column type and data type as type. These will be the four columns of our schema. Then in this part which says table schema, you have to provide your database name. So my database name is pet data. I'm going to write it here and once you execute this command, you will have your database schema in the form of different columns. You can always go ahead and save this either as a CSV or in any other format. I'm going to go with CSV. And once you do that, all of these rows will be saved inside the file called tables.csv. And this is how our file looks like. So I'm going to simply go ahead and copy all of these lines. I'm going to come back and paste these lines right here. And you have to remove the first line that says schema, table, column, and type because we don't want the table to have this name. Once you have done it, simply go ahead and click on save. And you will see that your tables having the name procedure details, procedure history, owners, and pets having these columns have been created. Now you are all set to write queries that can run on these tables. So for that, you have to go to the workspace. And this is the text box where you have to write your queries. The AI to SQL uses OpenAI's GPT-3 to write the SQL queries. The GPT-3 algorithm reads the data and only returns the result that match your query criteria. This means that every query that will be generated by the AI to SQL will actually be generated by the GPT-3. So now we are going to test if this tool is able to generate the queries for us or not. So we are going to generate five types of queries for it. First one is going to be the basic queries. The next category will be of grouping. Thirdly, we will test for the joint queries. The fourth category will be for filtering and sorting. And the last category will be of common table expressions. And we'll test if this AI pair programming tool is able to generate SQL queries for all these use cases or not. So let's go ahead and do it. Firstly, I'm going to provide it the query to count the number of pets of each kind. Then you have to select the database. I'm going to go with the MySQL one and then you have to provide the tables using which you want to generate the query. Since I'm going to be running multiple queries that may require all of the tables, so I'm going to add all of the tables at once. Then these tables will be selected for all the queries that we run on the database. Then once this is done, Simply go ahead and click on this generate button and it is going to generate the query for you. 
So you can see that here in the black box we have the query that says select kind count star as number of pets from the pets and group by the kind. We don't know if this query is correct or not so we are gonna go ahead and test it. Let's copy it go back to your MySQL workbench. I'm gonna paste the query here and run it and you can see that it has provided me correct output showing the number of pets for each kind. This means that for this prompt or for this particular scenario, AI2 SQL has generated the correct SQL query for us. Next, I want to find all the pets whose gender is female. So I'm going to prompt it, display the pets having gender female. I'm going to select the MySQL database. These are all the tables that will be selected and I'm going to click on generate. Once you do that, you will see that the response for your query will be generated in the form of SQL. And here is the code that says select star from pets where gender is female. So I'm going to go ahead and test it quickly. I'm going to run this query and you can see that it has provided me all the information about all the pets whose gender is female. So the last prompt in order to test the basic queries is to find out the names of all the employees who have more than one pet. And let's see if it can generate the query for this scenario or not. Alright, so here is the query. Let's go ahead and see if it is correct or not. So I'm going to copy this query from here. I'm going to go back to my MySQL workbench, paste it and run it. And it is not giving me any output. This means that there is some issue in the SQL query. So I'm going to copy it from here. I'm going to come back. And from this option, I'm going to say fix the query. And this time I'm going to ask it that this query is not given output, fix it and here is the query. So now I'm going to click on this generate button and we are going to see that in a few seconds it is going to fix the query for us. You can see that in the generated result it says that issue in the given SQL query are as follows. The select clause is incorrect. There should be a comma between the column names and the table alias or should be specified before each column name. Then it is saying that the join clause is incomplete, the on clause is missing the in comparison operator. But we have the comparison operator and we have the on clause. Okay, so this issue is incorrect. Then the group by clause is missing the table alias O before the owner ID column. It is also present here, so the issue is again incorrect. And the having clause condition is incorrect, it should be count p.pet id greater than 1 instead of count p.pet id 1 but here we have the bracket so this means that most of the issues that it highlighted are incorrect so now here is the corrected sql query let's see if it can generate the output for us or not so i'm gonna go ahead and quickly paste it here and run this and once again it is not giving us output so this means that it has not fixed the query and there is some sort of error in it now let's move towards our second category which is for grouping. So I'm going to come back to AI2 SQL platform. I'm going to paste my query here which says find the number of pets owners in each city. Here we have to actually count the number of pets owners and group them on the basis of city. So now instead of fix query I'm going to click on generate query and for the database I'm going to select MySQL. These are all the tables and I'm going to go ahead and click on generate button and it is going to generate the correct query for me. So here is the query for it that says count the distinct owner ID as the number of pet owners join the pet on owner ID equal to owner ID and group by a city. Let's test it out. I'm going to copy it, come back here and paste it and here is the result. That for each city, these are the number of pet owners which are present. So this query is working fine. So for the grouping category, I'm going to run another query to see if this tool is able to generate queries based on grouping or not. So I'm going to say display details of all procedures in the increasing order of price. So I'm going to click on generate response button and let's see what is the query which is generated by this tool. Okay, so here's the query. I'm going to copy this and let's test it out quickly. So run this command. And you can see that we have the procedure type, procedure subcode, description and price in increasing order. So on the top, we have the procedure type description having the minimum price. And as we go down, the price increases. So this is what increasing order of price means. So this means that AI to SQL is also able to generate SQL queries involving grouping statements. 
So now we are gonna test some join queries. So for that, I am gonna prompt it to find out the total cost of all the procedures that each pet has undergone. So the details of all the procedures, including its, its price, is stored inside the procedure details table, and the procedure history of each pet is stored inside the procedure history table so it is going to need to join multiple tables here in order to generate the correct response so i'm going to go ahead and click on generate button and let's see if it is able to generate the correct query for this scenario or not all right so here is the sql query apparently it looks fine so i'm going to go ahead and copy it and let's quickly test it out paste the query here and i'm going to run it all right so it has provided me that for the pet ID J68562, whose name is Blackie, the total cost of all the procedures that it has undergone is 175. For Simba, it is 10. For Cuddles, it is 10. And you can see that it has calculated the total cost of all the procedures which each pet has undergone. So this means that it has generated the correct query for our prompt. Let's test it out with another prompt. This time I'm going to prompt it to generate a query that display the records of all those pets who have undergone orthopedic procedure type. And this query is actually a type of the inner join. So let's see if the AI to SQL tool is able to generate the query involving inner join for us or not. Okay, so here's the query. Let's go ahead and quickly test it out to see if it can provide us the name of all the pets that have undergone orthopedic procedure. Okay, so these are the four pets that have undergone the orthopedic procedure. So this means that it has provided us the correct query for this prompt. So in order to test the join queries, I'm going to give it another prompt. This prompt is an example of self join so let's see if this tool is able to find the records of all those owners who live in the same city let's go ahead and click on this generate button all right so here is the query and it says that there is inner join written in the query let's see if it is able to generate the response for us or not so i'm gonna quickly go ahead and run this query and here is the response you can see that for the city grand rapid these are all the owners then for the Bloomfield Township, these are the owners. So this means that instead of using self-join, it has used the inner join and has produced the correct output for us. So this means that this tool is able to generate queries that involve join as well. Now I am going to test a query that involves filtering and sorting. So for that, I am going to prompt it, show me the top 10 procedures with the highest price and let's see if it can sort and filter our response or not all right so here is the query let's quickly go ahead and test it out and here i'm gonna paste it and run it and you can see that it has provided me 10 records because i asked it to show me 10 different procedures with the highest price so these are the 10 procedures and here are the prices and you can see that on the top we have the procedure with the highest price and on the bottom we have the procedure with the lowest price so this means that these are the top 10 procedures having the highest price. This means that this tool is also able to generate queries that involve filtering and sorting. Now I'm going to go ahead and test our last use case, which is the common table expression. So for that, I'm going to prompt it to compare the price of each procedure type with the average price of the corresponding procedure using CTE. And let's see if it can generate the response involving common table expressions or not. All right, so as we mentioned in our prompt that we need a common table expression, it has created a CTE for us, having the name procedure price in which it is actually calculating the average price. And then it is calculating the average price with the price of each procedure and displaying it. So now I'm going to copy this code and quickly go ahead and run this to see if it is the correct query involving the CTE or not. So let's go ahead and run this. And you can see that here is the information. We have the procedure type, procedure subcode, description price, average price, and price difference. So it is successfully calculating the average price using the CTE like we described it in the prompt. So the average price is calculated using the CTE. And then it is calling this CTE to subtract the average price from the price as the price difference. Here is the price, here is the average price and has calculated the price difference for us. This means that for all the five categories of queries, which were the basic queries, 
the grouping queries, joining queries, sorting and filtering as well as CTE. This tool is able to generate the correct queries for all of these scenarios. So now let's test another feature of this tool. I'm going to copy this query. I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you the feature in which it can actually explain the query. So from here in the drop down menu, I'm going to click on explain query. And in order to explain the query in this box, I'm going to paste it. And now you simply have to click on generate button to generate the response for explaining the query. So here in the response, it has provided me a detailed explanation of what this query does. So it says that this query is a combination of common table expressions, aggregations and joins to retrieve data from the procedure details table and calculate the price difference for different procedure types and the subcodes. And here is the explanation for each part of the query. So in addition to fixing the query and generating the query, you can also have an explanation for the query. And you also have the option to optimize the query. So if I select this optimize query option, and click on this generate button. Now you're going to see that it will provide me a new query, which will be an optimized version of the previous one that I've just provided to it. So here's the response. It says to optimize the given SQL query, you can consider the following. Firstly, we can perform indexing. Then we can simplify the CTE. So instead of having two separate CTEs, you can combine them into one and perform aggregation and calculation within it. This would reduce the number of operations performed and improve the query execution time. So it has also provided me the new query, what we can do in order to optimize our query. So this means that this tool is able to generate queries for us. It is able to fix our incorrect queries. It is able to explain the queries and it is also able to optimize our predefined queries. Using this tool, you can spend less time on writing queries and you can put more focus on the core business logic. So this will improve your productivity and will save you the time in writing complex queries using SQL. So I highly encourage all of you to try this amazing peer programming tool by yourself and get amazing benefits from it. Thanks for watching.